Uh, the first thing I want to do is review a topic uh, that came from. Uh, no, that's not it. Yeah, here. It. Oh, that is it. I got the wrong label there. Uh, yeah, that's not supposed to be it. All right, what I'm going to talk about is uh, the, the concept of function composition. This is an old operation we learned back in pre-calculus one. Um, it's a unique operation uh, defined purely for functions. We've talked about addition and subtraction of functions. We have rules for those in the derivative laws. Uh, multiplication, division of functions, we have rules for those in the derivative laws. Uh, but unlike real numbers, uh, functions have this unique operation called composition, and we're going to need to learn a rule for composition. And so uh, chain rule is going to be the name of that rule. But before we do that, let's remind ourselves what function composition is. So uh, a composite function looks like this. Uh, it's a literal evaluation. We have two functions, f and g, and we use f to evaluate g. Uh, we have a special notation. Uh, this is the notation that we use for function composition, although um, it's just as common to see it written directly in this form. <coughs> uh, but what this means is you take all the variables that occur within the formula for f and you replace them with the uh, formula for g. So this is just literal evaluations. Um, we've used this earlier in the semester when we were talking about the differentiation formula or definition. Uh, but now we can talk about them in a more general sense. So uh, let's talk about function composition for these couple of examples here. Uh, I've got two functions. f is the square root of x and g of x is x squared minus 1. So what is the composition of the two functions? Uh, if I compose f with g, uh, what do I get? So what that means is I'm going to take the function f and do an evaluation. I'm going to re evaluate f with g's formula. What that means is every occurrence in the formula for the function f is going to be replaced by x plus 1. So, in this case, what's that going to be? x squared minus 1 goes in place of the x that sits under the radical. So the result of this composition is just going to be the square root. Oh, it's supposed to be minus 1, not plus 1. So this is a brand new function that was created through the composition of two other functions. Uh, can I go any further? Can that be simplified? Can it? Another aspect of function composition is getting simplest form. Right? We want simplest form in all the things we do. Is that simplest form? Yeah. That's simplest form. You can't distribute the radical in particular. So, Okay, what happens if I go the other way? What happens if I compose g with f? What am I going to get? Well, now I'm going to turn it around. Now I'm going to use f to evaluate g. So now every occurrence in the formula for g is going to be replaced by the radical. Uh, in the formula for g, there's only one place that x occurs. So x is going to take the place of that x under the square power. So this direct substitution is going to give us this. Minus 1. So there's the substitution, right? The square root takes the place of x, and then that is being squared. So there is the um, result of the substitution. And now, uh, can that be simplified? What's the simplest form of this expression? So the square and the square power cancel each other, and uh, x minus 1 is the simplest form. Uh, so there's the evaluation in the other direction, or the substitution, or the composition in the other direction. Please notice, they're not the same. The order of composition makes a difference, unlike addition and subtraction, uh, sorry, not subtraction, addition and multiplication, uh, the uh, composition operator uh, does uh, give us different results in the typical case. Okay, same thing in number two. Here's two functions. What do I get if I do compositions in one direction or the other? What's the composition of f with g? 
So f is the outside function, g is the inside function. That's the terminology we're going to use. Because literally, if I look at in particular in this format, f is on the outside, g is on the inside. So the inside function is the function we use to do the evaluation. The outside function is the function that we use to substitute into. So f is going to be uh, evaluated at g. g is 1 over x squared. So what's going to happen? What's the result of that composition going to be? And so this whole thing here goes in place of that old x. So uh, what used to be cosine of x is now going to be cosine of 1 over x squared. And that's as far as I can go. That's the end of it. That can't be simplified any further. Um, what's going to happen if I try and do it in the other direction? Now I want to evaluate the function g with cosine. So now I'm going this way. Now that cosine operator is going to take the place of the variable in the formula for g. So it used to be x squared, now becomes cosine of x squared. Uh, and I can go ahead, I mean, you know, I'm going to do the usual thing. Uh, we have a shorthand for the square of the cosine function, right? We put the square between the function name and the variable, and that's the shorthand. We don't have to write the parentheses there. What else? Is that the end of it? Yeah, now I'm going to take it one step further. This is a, a, a one of our ratio forms. So uh, the reciprocal of cosine is the secant function. So in the end, this composition gives us secant squared. Once again, I got two very different results depending on which direction I did the composition. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, basic uh, uh, format for function composition. Um, for our purposes, what's going to be more important is being able to take a function apart that has been produced through composition. Uh, so here I've got some examples, three functions that have been uh, derived through the process of function composition. Uh, what I want to do is decompose them. What were the functions f and g that were required to produce these results? Uh, the first example, f of x is uh, 1 minus x raised to the fourth power. What were the two functions f and g that were required to produce this composition? And in other words, what's the inside function? What's the outside function? Uh, and so f composed with g means g's on the inside. What's the inside function in this case? And really, all you've got to do is follow the order of operations. If I was going to evaluate that, what would I do first? Well, if you gave me a value of x, the first thing I would have to do, I would have to go down inside those parentheses, and then I would have to do the evaluation. So the inside function for this example is the 1 minus cosine. Uh, what's the outside function for this composition? Hmm? x to the fourth. That's what function I need to, so that if I substitute 1 minus cosine x, I end up with the fourth power of 1 minus cosine x. There, that's a literal decomposition of the composite function identifying as two components. So the function f, big F here that I have is the result of these two functions being composed. f composed with g is that result. And if we think about it as inside and outside, then, you know, in most cases, it's pretty obvious how that's supposed to work itself out. Um, example B, how do I decompose these? Uh, in this case, inside. So again, in the order of operations, the parenthetical comes first. So if I know what x is, I've got to figure out what x divided by 2 is. That's on the inside. And then the last evaluation comes on the outside. What would f of x be in this case? Tangent x. 
So where did that function big F come from? Well, it came from these two functions being composed. And the result is exactly that. And finally, the last one. <coughs> um, this function here can actually be looked at as uh, more than, in fact, this function could be the result of, that's well, probably true for the others. Uh, we could look at all of these as multiple applications of the uh, function composition. Um, but uh, what can we say about this? For this example, if I want to compose two functions and end up with big F, uh, how would I define the inside function? Yeah. So I've got a choice here. Normally what we do is we take the most complicated function and put it on the inside, and then we take the simplest function and leave it on the outside. So when I look at all the operations that are involved here, uh, under the radical, I've got the square, I've got sum, I've got multiplication, so lots of operations involved there. So I'm going to put all of those operations together in the, in, uh, as the inner function, because once all of those things have been taken care of, there's only one thing left to do. And again, there's more than one way any of these could have been done. Any of these can be done in more than one way, but we normally, the uh, trick is always to make that outside function as simple as possible. You want that outside function to be your simplest function. Uh, if there's lots of work going on, then try and isolate that on the inside. But if I'm going to call uh, the uh, g of x, x squared plus 2x, what will f of x be? So the only thing left to do is put that under the radical in the denominator. So this would be one way to look at this composition. Um, now, there is another way, right? Uh, I could have done something like this. I could let my inside function be this whole thing. If I went that way, as far as my inside function goes, uh, what would that leave for the outside function? Just 1 over x. Um, yeah, I did say that, uh, but I guess what I really meant was um, uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, would I really prefer this? Um, in the end, in this case, uh, no, yeah, yeah, I think I would really prefer this. And the reason is, when we look at, uh, uh, ideally what you want is for that outside function to be a simple function in the sense of only one operation. Uh, the, in particular, uh, when I look at these two functions here, the choice between these two, um, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I guess there really is no difference here. I guess the real question is, if I were going to take derivatives, because that's, in the end, what I'm going to have to end up doing is I'm going to have to take derivatives of both of these functions. And if I look at it in that way, then the original statement here, this is probably going to be the simplest. Because as we're about to see, we haven't seen this yet, we're about to see it. Uh, but this function here has a very complicated derivative. Um, but in the end, it really doesn't matter, actually. Either one will work. Uh, but, so again, uh, there is a little bit of ambiguity here, right? Is it, in this case, are either one of these two preferred? Um, eh, in the long run, no. Either one of these is, is acceptable. At least in the, in the sense that we've isolated a single operation, right? In the, in the end, uh, the, F, the two outside functions are both power functions. They're both simple power functions. So as long as I keep that outside function as simple as I can, then the other arrangements don't really matter. So. Okay, so that's the important stuff for us, being able to take functions apart that have been produced through the composition operation. <coughs> okay, so that's review. That's just to remind you what function composition